America. My name is Ahmed Yosef Frimpong. I come to you live every Monday and Thursday. Monday, I do a relationship show, but it's more a holistic view of relationships so that you don't screw up your, not just dating, but also your marriage or anything else. I don't, I don't want you to screw any of those things up. And with this culture of casual divorce, anybody could just wake up and be quit on at any point in time. And I don't want that to happen to you, and I don't want that to happen to your kids. And I, I actually think that casual divorce is a form of child abuse, but that's going to be fodder for another show. Uh, also, I do a politics show on Thursday, which is more politically focused about how we organized this nation in order, or how we should organize this nation in order to sustain some of our meaningful institutions of freedom, including the family, but are not limited to the family. All right, so today we're going to talk about chia parenting. Apparently, chia parenting is a thing. It's a name I've coined, so if you see it around, it started right here. It's a name I've coined for people who think that really with kids, all you have to do is kind of add water and spread them around, and then all of a sudden, they'll just kind of grow up right the way they're supposed to because you add water. They think of parenting. They don't actually think of that you have to parent. I, I'm, I'm impressed with the number of chia parents who don't actually think they have to parent. They think that either their fancy school will do the parenting for them or um, that nature will do the parenting for them or things will just kind of work out. Uh, but we live in a world that's completely parasitic upon your youth. So the, the idea that is that you are a parent and you should have to both protect and cultivate them. It's not enough just to protect them from the more parasitic elements of both the market culture that will have them on jewels and drinking white claws and having all sorts of sex. Because you have to imagine that all media in the culture is trying to turn them into a commercial entity and think of themselves as a commercial entity that buys and sells like, like a mercenary. So all media in the culture is against them actually becoming a moral agent that's responsible and accountable and not just buying and selling things. Um, so like you, as a, as a parent, you have to protect them against a media that wants to turn them into someone who wants the latest fashion <laughs> uh, to, uh, to uh, some sort of commercial maven. And you also have to cultivate within them the consciousness and the will so that they could actually uh, guide their life and participate in relationships that will mutually be mutually beneficial for everyone participating in a relationship. If you have a son or daughter and your son or daughter is like has a string of bad relationships and divorces and all that stuff, that's your fault, right? Preferably, my kids are going to pick someone. I have two daughters and a son. They'll probably end up picking someone with my sensibility and I don't have to worry about it. So I don't have to really worry about them. Um, not just because, and I can say that because I'm actually instilling that, not just because I just assume that they'll pick someone with my sensibility. No, I'll, 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 I, I tell them, you should pick someone with my sensibility. You see all the work that I do that goes into you. Pick someone so that maybe you can split that kind of work and, and, and all of that, you know. I am preparing them for the, to be an adult. The worst thing we could do to children, and I'll say this very clearly, the worst thing we could do to children is to uh, get them satisfied with childness, childishness. Children should always want to grow into becoming adults. And so we need to make adulthood look cool, but also understand. And they know they're not going, they want to be older. They want to actually do cooler things and have more responsibility and, and have more ability. Um, and if, unless you are a bad parent who engages and indulges in their childishness and makes them actually value childish this as a, as a form of superiority, then uh, they will be dissatisfied with being a child, which is appropriate because that dissatisfaction should be stoked and then used in order to promote more mature habits. And you will help them on their journey to becoming less childish. If you teach them to fall in love with childishness, then they'll become vain and they'll never grow up and it'll be a problem. By the way, you don't get this quality of wisdom everywhere in America, so you should go ahead and go to www.funkyacademic.com and kick in five, fifteen, or fifty dollars. By the way, if you want like the more philosophically rigorous version of what I said, go to uh, the elements of um, elements of philosophy of right. Hegel talks about family, and he has a, a chapter on children, and and you'll see a lot of what I said comes from there, especially the part about 
teaching children not to be satisfied with being children. <laughs> and, and any method of pedagogy that teaches children to be satisfied with being children is actually not teaching them to grow out of being children which is a problem, it's, it's, it's gonna teach. And if you want children to stay children forever, they're going to be self-evolved and petty and not be able to sustain real relationships because children can't, are, are the, like children as unmature, as immature are, are like that. So if you want your children to grow out of that, you have to teach them not to be satisfied with that. A lot of people screw this up they indulge children and, and tell children that the best thing that they can be is children, and then they're surprised when their children don't want to grow up. <laughs> it's because you've told them that the best thing that they could be is children, as opposed to like childhood is an awful thing that you will endure as you grow out of being childhood, being a child. And that is the way to, to raise like people who look forward to becoming adults, which is as it should be. All right. So, tier parenting doesn't take the responsibility of parenting seriously. They think kids raise themselves and, um, or that they raise themselves by, uh, they, they, they think that children raise themselves or uh, that all you have to do is like kind of keep them, they, they think of them as pets. But all you have to do is think of like, keep them healthy and um, fed and they just kind of grow organically and naturally. That is garbage for garbage parenting. Like you have to, it's not a natural development. It doesn't happen without the intentional cultivation of their consciousness and will. You're training their emotions so that they're happy at the right th about the right things and sad about the right things and that you're constantly change, uh, training their emotions to respond to success and failure in the right way with the right content, with the, book, with the right intellectual content. So it's not just a matter of just kind of keeping them fed and happy. Because honestly, you might want to keep them unhappy. You need to sustain the right amount of anxiety and unhappiness if you want a functioning uh, adult eventually. So people who think that People who think that parenting is just a matter of, like, and I see it in my generation and the generation above, because the generation above didn't actually think that, like, I was a latchkey kid, which is code for, a, I'm a Gen Xer latchkey kid, which is code from, like, my parents would just work at all the, my mom, my, my mom, my mom worked three to 11, man, and divorced. So, like, I was raised by television. I was raised by nothing uh, except the fall guy and, like, different strokes, what's happening. So I could talk to you about um, television of my era. And that's, like, I was raised by reruns. <laughs> and not just rerun, but reruns of <laughs> like <laughs> like shows that were even not even contemporary with my childhood because like um, but I parent my kids in a very kind of intentional way, and the results are much much better. Like all the things I had to teach myself, I actually get to teach my kids, and my kids can do better than I did, and they don't have to deal with the same kind of insecurities and anxieties. It wasn't until I went to college that I met kids who were actually parented and I was like oh there's a difference so the tia parenting that's comfortable that the tia parenting that um, Americans especially liberals but just Americans in general take as a form of parenting isn't really a form of parenting it's a form of outsourcing to really incompetent institutions to do your parenting for you and I think it's irresponsible I think it's irresponsible but I think it's very common and it's in the water. And, you know, commercial society wants to uh, tell you that that's parenting because that way they can get you to work more in civil society. You can spend more time at the job because you feel comfortable that some tutor or some program or some other institution is going to raise your kid. When really, you might need to protect your kid from that tutor program or institution. Or they're just not going to give you the skills you need. Right? So part of what it is to be a parenting is to manage the parasites who want to feed on your ch child. But also, like, get all of the specialized experts your child needs in order to become an expert at something. Children are going to have to become an expert at something. It's the best to teach them to become an expert at something when they're young, because when they get older, they're going to have to become an expert at something. The good news is there are many things to become an expert at, and you don't have to be an expert at all of them. But children should be excellent in something um, so that they learn how to distinguish themselves and be excellent at something that's useful going forward. I think also there's a gender aspect of this insofar as 
we would we taught that parents don't need to do anything or that women are in charge of this kind of childcare domestic labor, but um, these that was the same generation of women who were taught that like they don't have to work outside of the home, so they don't have to know anything about both politics and civil society outside of the home. So what? So like, I will tell you right now, and you're not going to hear this very often. The least important part of running a household is the cooking and cleaning. That's anything you could hire out if you had money. Um, like, isn't that important? Like, parenting, real parenting, real managing of the parasites who are going to try to feed on your kid isn't something you could ever hire out, which means it's probably one of the most important part of, like, the household. Um, and I'm of the age now where, like, I know people who are older than I am who have a lot of money but screwed up kids uh, and then wish that, like, oh, wow, how did that happen? I thought, I, I thought the money would solve the problems. But you have screwed up kids. Right? Or people my age who are making a lot of money and still have screwed up kids and can't figure out why their kids are screwed up and why they're just bad and can't imagine themselves as being bad at something because they have so much money, but they have screwed up kids. And that's like, if you have screwed up kids, you're bad at, you're bad at the parenting. And you know, there are a lot of excuses that are like, well, you know, it's just, they have ADD or they have blah, 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 blah. Yo, turn my mic up. Um, how about that? How about that? I'll turn my mic up a little bit. You should get more than that. Um, uh, so there are a lot of excuses that bad parents give for being bad parents, but really they, um, they were just bad at, they were never taught how to be parents. We never take it seriously. They just, we don't take parenting seriously. We think of parenting as a form of chia parenting where you just kind of spread and you kept, keep them fed and you keep them watered and then they will grow as nature intended, but we don't live in a natural world. <laughs> if they, if we don't live, there's nothing about this world that is natural. Um, so we can't expect them to, to, to grow naturally, um, uh, and, and, and thrive naturally. Everything in this world has been manufactured. So you need to prepare them consciously for a world that has been manufactured consciously. All right. So if you're not doing that, you don't know what you're doing as parenting. Or if you think that like, all you need to do is provide money for your child. Um, that's not parenting. And you can't be surprised when your kid's going to have all sorts of real relationship issues that are completely your fault because you never parent them. You didn't bring them up in the world in order for them to be functional adults. And that is your fault. But I've given you warning now. If you don't have kids and you're watching this show, be warned because I'm like the game I'm giving you is, is uh, going to save you a lot of heartache and confusion. All right. Thank you for your time. And I uh, will talk to you on Thursday about something different.